So, Chuck, I haven't checked in on you lately. What's been eating you? Well, you know, I'm not sure if it's something that's eating me, but I'm curious because a little while ago you were on CNN and there was a lot of hoopla about man returning to space. <laughs> no, no. Billionaire returning oh, to that's space. That's true. Yeah, billionaire yeah, yeah. returns to space. and, and <laughs> Actually, that's no, new- it's like... <laughs> There's Cro-Magnon man. Now we have Billionaire Man. This is so true. <laughs> billionaire Man <laughs> billionaire going to man. space. Right. And and now it looks like that's the new thing, is that billionaires in space, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what's your problem? So my problem is- oh, By the way, just that, to be clear, I was on I was on Fareed Zakaria GPS. Just right. Just to give him a shout out. Yeah. He's a good guy. We all love him. Who's your buddy? Uh-huh. That's, that's your buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the thing. So during that day, on every single channel- the coverage was like the moon landing. <laughs> yeah. It true. was like, it was like, and I'm thinking. We interrupt this program. Right. It's they special. get a break in. A special. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, yo, that's kind of like we went to the North Pole and then we did a Sarah Pale and like, you know, I could see the North Pole from my house. But then we said that was like, we went there. Didn't we do Better than this already? Oh, okay, so what you mean, let me unpack what you just said. So so uh, on the occasion that I was on CNN, uh, it was Richard Branson. Right. Who had a crew of six, including himself, who went into a, a suborbital flight, had a few minutes of weightlessness, and then because it's a space plane, a rocket plane, right. it could come back and land on a runway. Okay, so... Uh, you're saying, did we do that before? Yeah, kind of. We did it 60 years ago with Alan Shepard, all right, America's first astronaut, basically. And right. he was launched from Cape Canaveral, launched him due east, and plunked down in his capsule in the Atlantic Ocean, and we plucked him out um, with an aircraft carrier, as we did with all the all the astronauts who landed okay. in the water. So we did that 60 years ago. So wh- why all the buzz? Because this is now done by a private Enterprise, yeah. okay. Uh, it's it's called uh, uh, was it Virgin Galactic? All right. So a private enterprise. It's a billionaire. He's on the the, the jet. He's well, that's on how the, you knew it was going to work. That's how you knew it was going to work. That's how you knew it was going to work. <laughs> so he has literal skin in the game. And for me, I'm not riding any billionaire's rocket anywhere until they send their mother. And bring her back, or themselves, right? I mean, that this, this counts. So this this was remarkable publicity. If you were thinking about signing up for the trip, and the man gets on the trip himself, so I think all of that worked. And the man likes to live. What's the, what's the French joie de vie? Was it joie what, de vie? Whatever. The lover of that, life. Yeah, lover of life. And so so uh, so that was the celebration of the day. Now. Um, so how far did they go? Because they kept saying, going to the space, space. Yes. And I'm we an are. astrophysicist. I, I know what space is. Right. All right. And they called uh, it the first commercial space flight. But I'm well, like, Well, except is really? Elon has sent his own spaceships into orbit. So, and it was commercial in that sense. I, so I don't know what they would mean by that. But, hmm. so, so, let's, so what do they mean by space? Well, he went up about 50 miles, 50 something miles. like that around there. And that's lower than the internationally agreed altitude, by the way, just so you know. That's okay. The Air Force recognizes that as, as space, but internationally, it's a little higher, 62 miles, which comes out to be a clean 100 kilometers. So, so wait a minute. You mean to tell me that he couldn't tack on 12 lousy miles? <laughs> it takes a lot more energy to keep ascending away from Earth's gravity. He need a bigger rocket. We're going to need a bigger rocket. Okay? okay. You take a look at his size, the size of his rockets relative to Jeff Bezos's rocket. They're, one is way bigger than the other, just okay. in terms of sort of launch mass. Okay. Mm. Somebody's so, compensating for something. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I said, is Chuck going to go there? Yeah. He's, uh, he went he there. To, of course. <laughs> Chuck went there. I have so, no choice. So, so here's the thing. So what happens at 100 kilometers? You ascend high enough so that there's so few air molecules. I think we've talked about this on a previous yeah, we have. explainer. Yeah. There's so few air molecules that there's nothing there to scatter sunlight. And the blue sky, sky blue, is scattered sunlight. If right. you remove the atmosphere because you're so high up, 
then there's nothing there to scatter it. There is no blue sky because there's no sky. Mm. And then the nighttime, uh, the nighttime universe reveals itself while the sun is also in the sky at the same time. So, so they, they, they classify that as space, the boundary between our atmosphere and space. So if, but, you, give, if you get far enough out of Earth, far enough away from Earth, and you're like, yo, I think we're in a black neighborhood. <laughs> You made it to space. <laughs> oh, because the sky loses its brightness. Because the sky literally goes black. <laughs> you're in a, you're in a black neighbor. Damn, Chuck. I'm why's sorry. everything got it? Chuck, Chuck, I thought you were in therapy for this. I, I am. I am. <laughs> All right. But, but anyway. And, okay. And for so, those of you out there, they're called jokes. Don't write me okay. and say, stop being racial, Chuck. I'm, you know, I live in America. What you want? <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. Okay. So you're in space. That's what we, we want to call that space. Now you're you're not weightless though. People equate being in space with being weightless. You're only weightless if you're in free fall. Uh -huh. Okay. So if at that moment he cuts off his engines and they fall, then you're weightless. Got you. For as long as you're falling. Right. Okay, but there's a point where the atmosphere gets thick enough again, and in the case of Richard Branson's rocket, it was also a, an airplane. It had airfoil. So right. as it starts hitting atmosphere, then the control surfaces of his wings begin to take effect, and then it can actually do a descent as an airplane. But the moment it does that, you are no longer weightless. Right. Okay. So I just want to make that clear. The weightlessness is simply for being in free fall, mm. not for being in what people are calling space. Space. That's, it's not like you hit space. I'm weightless. Oh my gosh, I'm weightless. No, right. no. It's are your rockets firing? No. Are you a plane? Go. No. You're just falling. You're weightless over that time. It's just like the, what is it? The parachute drop or whatever it is at the amusement park. Un right. When they just drop the floor out under you, you are weightless until. Some parachute opens, but over right. that time, you're weightless, basically right. weightless, okay? Cool. Now, if you fall long enough, then the air resists you, all right? But for the while you're accelerating, you're weightless. And so that's the experience. So now, here's the thing. Do you need to go up 62 miles, 100 kilometers, to see the night sky? No, you can just wait until the sun sets. <laughs> oh, my God. That's okay. terrible. <laughs> I, uh. I'm just I'm telling like it is, Chuck. I'm just okay. so happy. This is why you, that this is why you you have me as your man here. Okay? I am so I'm so happy that neither Bezos or Branson are watching this room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm because just saying, so so to say, oh, I can now see the night sky. Right. I'm in space. Right. We, after sunset, you're seeing exactly the same damn night sky. Okay? <gasps> so 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 the, so then the next side of it is you're getting to be weightless for a couple of minutes. Well, we have what's called the vomit comet. I was yes, the, the and, and airplane you, you, without going into space, but it goes to a high enough altitude, and then it just sort of sh shuts off its engines and then drops. Or there are ways to control it so that the engines can simulate a free fall. But while in that period, you're weightless. In fact, they filmed all of Apollo 13. All the I, I was told all of the weightless scenes in Apollo 13 were actually filmed in a, in the vomit comet. Wow, so they were actually weightless. They were actually weightless, not on, on cables. Dude, right. That that is a level of commitment that yes. you have to respect. Yes, yes, yes. And so and you only get like 20 minutes of pop, so you have to just keep going. You, you just keep doing that, right? Wow. To get all your footage, right? You can't say, oh, let's get another take just for safety. No, right. you, that's all you get because I'm ready to throw up all over your ass. That was perfect. Okay? Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right, so the night sky you're going to get after sunset, the weightlessness you can get on a vomit comet. Right. So now how high up are they relative to the Earth? Are they going to see the curvature? I did a calculation. The answer is no. Okay? Uh, so let's run this back again. So, Chuck, schoolroom globe. Okay. About a foot across, right? Right. Uh, the space station. Okay. You're going to find that orbiting. It'd be about a centimeter above the surface, about three-eighths of an inch. That's the... International Space Station, three-eighths of an inch. Wow. All right, that's 250 miles. So so uh, Branson went a fifth of that. So it's a fifth of a centimeter. That's two millimeters, which is just a little less than a sixteenth of an inch. 
oh. above her service. So if you got a ruler, any standard like ru- American ruler, it Couldn't doesn't ha- doesn't even have the the, the markings. There's no demarcation to say this is where we are. The, 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 well, because the, the the first marker is farther away than the height that uh, Richard Branson. Uh, ascended above earth. So, so Richard that, Branson, you must be this tall to ride this ride. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, so I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying. I just I I, I it's it's truth in in, you know, it's it, we can be honest about it. Now, by the way, if people want to do this and pay a quarter million dollars, I don't have a problem. Open up a whole new tourist industry. No problem. No problem. Oh, by the way, Jeff Bezos' rocket, okay, you may have seen, does not land as an airplane because no. it's basically a capsule. So that that has to be like retrieved and brought back to uh, to its destination, just the way Alan Shepard did in 1961. Okay. So, but in each case, there's a period of time where they are weightless, and that's what people are paying for. And Bezos' cabin has bigger windows. So again, there is this billionaire competition thing going yeah. on. I, I kind of I'm, I enjoy it on the sidelines here. It sounds to me the way you have just described this is you could save yourself two hundred forty nine thousand <laughs> nine hundred ninety dollars <laughs> by going to Six Flags <laughs> and riding oh, any what? one of them roller coasters. <laughs> okay, one one other thing. So. Uh, as you, you may remember, there's an airplane that's taking off that deploys the rocket plane. Right. And they go up to like 40-something thousand feet, and the rocket plane takes off. All right. The rocket plane is in free fall until the engines kick in, so they'll actually be weightless for a little period of time there. And then the rockets kick in, and they experience about three Gs. Three Gs is sort of um, good housekeeping approved G-forces on the human body. So okay. that's the maximum you're going to get at an amusement park. That's the, what they subject the, the shuttle astronauts to. The, uh, that, so they, you, they could accelerate you faster than that, right. but they don't need to, and so they don't. And so 3Gs is like, you know, nice. Um, As uh, King Dakar at, 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 at Great Adventure. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's within the realm of what we have all experienced if you're a fan of amusement parks. So that, that's what it is. That. Wow! So, but but more power to them. Somebody's got it. I'm glad somebody's doing it. Yeah. I'd watch them do it, and and, and that, that's why. I should I put this? Um, I never want to interfere with someone who is trying to advance a frontier. Right. Even if I have skepticism, I'll share the skepticism if you ask what you did. Right. But I'm not going to run in front of the line saying don't no, not necessarily. I just let it go because there's spinoffs. There's all kinds of things that overall historically have been good for civilization and for culture. And so I tip my hat to all of what they're doing. No, it's like, look, you're rich, right? You got to find something to do with your money. Somebody comes (laughs) along and says, hey, you like motorcycles, right? You're like, I love motorcycles. They're like, I got a brand new motorcycle for you. It's human powered. You get on it and you just pedal really, really hard. (laughs) Oh. And it only costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Chuck, that is not how. Damn, Chuck. Okay, by the way, Elon is not fooled by any of this. Okay, because you know you don't hear Elon saying, "I want to just put people into suborbital paths." Right. What is Elon saying? Go to Mars. Go to Mars. <laughs> He's saying go to Mars. Yeah, and and just to put this back in perspective, so Richard Branson went two millimeters above a schoolroom globe. Okay. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos a little higher. Okay. The, the space station is one centimeter above the globe. Okay. The moon, 30 feet away. Okay. Mars, a mile away. Oh, my goodness. There it is. So on scale, yo. Uh, so, we, so when you say, let's go into space. Right. And you tell that to an astrophysicist, I have a different answer for you than 50 miles up. That's all I'm saying. We got to call a quiz there, Chuck. All right. Why you pull all this out of me? I was perfectly I'm sorry, happy. Man. I was so minding glad. my own damn business. I'm so glad we did this, though. <laughs> okay. Take that, billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, this has been a, a Star Talk explainer, instigated by Chuck. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. <laughs>